All right, you may have considered this before, but I certainly hadn't. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. Today I wanted to take a few minutes and talk about backup power strategies because before this recent hurricane rolled through the Carolinas and Tennessee, I had never really considered the thought of being without power for more than a few days. Uh, I've lived in my current house for roughly two decades now, and the longest we've ever been without power was about 36 hours, and that only happened when a devastating uh, group of tornadoes rolled through my hometown. So, you know, that being the longest that I've ever been without power, I never gave any thought to the possibility of being without power for two or three weeks at a time. Now, when you first start considering your needs for backup power, you need to think about the critical things. And let me tell you, air conditioning is not on this list. That's gonna be on a completely different list. Right now, we're talking about absolutely critical items that you need in order to make it through that power outage. Uh, things like a well pump or a refrigerator uh, freezer combination, um, maybe your comms gear, maybe other things that you need to keep charged up. Maybe it's rechargeable flashlights or headlamps. You really need to consider those critical items first because that's going to dictate how much power needs you really have during that emergency. For instance, if you're on a well pump, we well, are automatically got to have a generator that's got 240 volt supply to it here in the US because all of those well pumps are gonna require 240 or 220, whichever way you wanna look at that. It's going to require uh, more volts to run a device like a well pump. Something you might want to consider is a device called a kilowatt meter. This is a device that you can plug up, say an appliance to, and figure out exactly how much power it's going to consume over a 24 hour period. This will give you a pretty good educated guess as to how much power you're going to need for any one particular item. Then if you've got multiple items, say you've got multiple refrigerators that you need to keep uh, going during a power outage, you can start adding those up and get a good idea of what you're going to need in terms of power. Now, I'm going to be talking about three areas for this layered approach. We're going to be talking about solar, we're going to be talking about generators, and we're also going to be talking about batteries. So let's start first with solar. Now, if you've already got a whole house solar system, well, you're probably not watching this video to begin with. Good for you, you probably can just uh, skip past this section altogether. For everybody else though that doesn't have a whole house solar system that's also got batteries to store that energy, when you start looking at solar panels to recharge your batteries, let me just tell you from experience, buy more than you think you'll need. Um, solar is not the quickest way to get those batteries recharged, but the more we add, the more panel uh, panels we add to it, the faster we can recharge those batteries. However, you always have to take into account the weather conditions. So if it's a cloudy day, you're not going to get as much out of that panel as you would on a full sun day. Also, you've got to take into account the shorter days of the year during the fall and winter. You just won't have as many hours of daylight to work with. So even if you've got full sun, you're not going to get as much power out of that panel during the winter months. Next up, let's talk about generators. And guys, please forgive me, I am kind of glancing at my phone to look at my notes because I don't want to overlook anything in this. Now, primary, uh, if your budget allows for it, would be a whole house generator backup. Uh, that is the most expensive option, which also makes it um, probably the least likely for you to have. If you have one, Good. Uh, you don't have to worry about it quite as much, but hang on, we're going to talk about one caveat where you might want to consider other alternatives. Uh, the, so the biggest downside with a whole house generator is they are expensive. The next thing though, and something that we saw during Hurricane Helene, some parts of North Carolina 
uh, saw that the natural gas supply was turned off due to flooding. So even if your house survived and your generator was there, you might not have natural gas to run that if that supply is shut off. So uh, the only real way around that is if you have a propane tank there and you're running your whole house generator off of a very large propane tank instead of running it off of natural gas that you're reliant on someone, um, the city, to deliver to your property. So if, you've, uh, if you can get the whole house generator, that would absolutely be top tier in my book. Unfortunately, my budget doesn't allow for those. So the next best thing is going to be some smaller portable style generators. Now there's two kind of camps on this. A, if you've got that well pump that we talked about earlier, you're definitely gonna have to have a generator big enough that's got that uh, 220 volt that you're going to need to power that well pump. However, the downside to the larger uh, generators is that they're going to require more fuel. In my interview with Dean, we learned that he was going through somewhere around five to seven gallons a day with the larger generator. So that's always a drawback if you've got to use a larger generator, it's going to be more fuel consumption. However, if you could limit the runtime on that large generator to say an hour or two each day, you could then maybe pick up a smaller generator that's going to be more fuel efficient that could do the tasks that require less power going through the rest of the day. And this is the approach that I have taken. I've got one larger generator that uh, can provide us with more power if we need it, and I've got a smaller, much more fuel uh, efficient generator that I'll use when I don't need that large one. Now, thankfully, I don't have to worry about the well pump. I'm on city water here, so that is uh, not something that I have to consider uh, needing a generator that has 220 volts. So even my gas generator can be a little bit smaller and not uh, quite as fuel hungry as some of the larger ones could be. Personally, I prefer to run my smallest generator if at all possible because it is a dual fuel generator and I only run that one on propane. It just eliminates that whole issue of having to deal with dirty carburetors if you have a generator that you only run on propane. All right, so last on the list is batteries, lithium iron phosphate batteries to be specific. This is something that I have really changed since I've been studying what's gone on during Hurricane Helene because I found a kind of a critical flaw in my thinking that I needed to address. And I've got plenty of batteries. I've got multiple 100 amp hour batteries. I've got a 200 amp hour battery. I've got that uh, Opus battery uh, or, or power station. Um, so I've got quite a few batteries in my lineup that will run quite a few things. I mean, you can easily take a 100 amp hour battery and run the refrigerator. That Opus power station will run a refrigerator for seven hours by itself. Here's the thing I hadn't thought about before this though. How fast can we recharge those batteries? I've only had a 20 amp charger in my arsenal up until this point. Well, that was the largest one I had. I've got a couple of smaller ones as well. But if we're talking about a 100 amp hour battery, if you've only got a 20 amp charger, I've got to run that charger from a generator for five solid hours in order to recharge just one of those lithium iron phosphate 100 amp hour batteries. And this is where I've changed my strategy quite a bit. So I've picked up a 40 amp charger for the lithium iron phosphate batteries. I could have probably gone a little bit larger, but I'm okay with 40 amps. That means in just about two and a half hours, I can take a 100 amp hour battery and take it from zero to full. So now I can limit the runtime on my generators. If I simply connect the battery charger and charge up one or two of those, I'm only running the generator for about a five hour period to get two of those batteries charged. Also, that Opus power station that I recently acquired, that has a 1300 watt charger. So you can bring, now I'm not talking about the B2 expansion pack, let me be clear on that, but just the base station. With the 1300 watt charger that's built into it, 
I can bring that power station from zero to 100% in right around an hour. So if I'm able to run the 40 amp charger for the lithium iron phosphate batteries, plus that 1300 watt charger for the Opus battery station, in just about five hours, I can have uh, roughly around 300 amps of power stored in those batteries, ready to power things. And the reason that's critical for me is I might not wanna listen to that generator around the clock. Being able to layer things and mix the batteries and the generators together allows me to conserve fuel on the generator by only running it during the periods that I absolutely have to have it. And keep this in mind, even with something like a refrigerator, you don't have to run that around the clock. You could simply run that for say three hours in the morning and assuming you don't open the doors of that refrigerator or that freezer, you can probably go three or four hours without the power running and then cycle it again to keep everything uh, cold and frozen, uh, but without having to run that thing 24 seven. So there's some of my thoughts and how I've been changing my backup power strategy since studying Hurricane Helene. If you think I've missed something, leave it down in the comments below because I'm always wanting to learn more about how everyone looks at their backup power strategy. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.